Yep. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Akanksha, and uh, today we will be discussing about mastering the art of resume writing. A uh, very important skill, um, and there have been a lot of videos and courses and uh, you know discussions that have been happening of late. I thought I'll collaborate with Milo and uh, share my bit of gyan with you guys on this. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I graduated from Nalsar in 2008. And uh, at that point of time, I knew what I didn't want to do, but I didn't know what I could do. So I tried uh, my hand at a variety of things. I sat with judicial services coaching. I just didn't want to go back home. And, um, but uh, once I was there, I realized that that's not my cup of tea. I like socializing a lot. I like meeting a lot of people. Not that I'm saying that I would have cracked it in one shot, but yeah, um, I sat there, it was, a very interesting experience because till that time I was living in this national law school uh, bubble. That was the time when I got to meet a lot of students whose sole aim was to crack judicial services, civil services, and most of the students were from Delhi University, Punjab University. So very interesting experience. Um, then I worked with Central Information Commission for a little while. And after that, I got to know about this company called Rainmaker. And uh, that was love at the very first sound of it. And I knew that this is what I really wanted to do. So yeah, I started my career as a recruiter um, later with Bahura. Um, so I spent good four and a half, five years with them. After that, I worked with um, Amarchand Mangaldas, erstwhile Amarchand Mangaldas, uh, and later Cyril Amarchand Mangaldas. And uh, I basically headed their Pan-India talent management practice. So all the hiring that happened from Fresher to partner level, I was a part of that. Also very interesting bit that I did there was uh, going to campuses and uh, you know, I was part of all the day zero bit and also took care of all the internship that happened at camp when I was there. And combining both the experiences and uh, you know, whatever my inputs were, uh, you know, where I thought, uh, some bits were missing in the industry. I thought I'll start on my own. And uh, all my seniors from uh, Rainmaker, from Bahura, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Shroff, all these people were very supportive. And I decided that, okay, I'll start on my own. And that's how To Whom It May Concern came into existence. And since, so, since then, uh, uh, that was in 2017. And since then, I've been uh, recruiting for top law firms, corporate houses. and a large part of it is also training law students in various law schools. So in the COVID times, a lot of my students told me to start doing this online. So I've been doing a lot of workshops online where I train students in the art of resume writing, uh, cover letter, your group discussion, how to crack interviews and uh, how to you know, prepare yourself for internships and how to crack internships as well. So, Keeping that in mind, a small bit of that we will take care of in this workshop. It's not going to be as extensive. Uh, my workshops are really extensive, but this will give you a fair idea of uh, what I really take care of in my workshops. And But this will be equally meaty. You will know how your resume should look and what all you should be including. So yeah, I'm going to share my screen so you'll be able to see the presentation now. Okay. So why are we doing this? Now, uh, at least till a few months back, there were no formal courses as such. Nobody really trains you in the art of resume writing. And uh, what you do is basically you take care, you know, and I'm talking about mostly from the perspective of law students, you take help of your seniors, your alumni, and prepare a resume. Now, they are helping you on the basis that, okay, this worked for me and probably what should work for you as well. But there's no set rule for that. Also, even for laterals. So I assist a lot of partners, senior associates in their resume writing process as well, because as I said, there's no formal training that happens for resume writing. So this is the reason that, uh, you know, why I have drafted this thing. And also what happened uh, at Bahura, I used to train a lot of lawyers from, uh, as I said, junior level to senior level. 
But when I went to CAM and I went to all these campus placements and uh, sat in PPO interviews, I realized that students were still making the same mistakes that we were making back in 2000, uh, 2008, despite there being a lot more information available online. So that's where I decided that, okay, with this experience, I'm going to prepare a module, which will help students and make sure that they have a perfect resume in place. So this will work equally for laterals as well. So this is why we are doing this. How will you benefit out of this? Um, I think your resume will look very, very good after this. Resume is all about first impression, right? So before anyone has met you, they've seen your resume. And based on that, they decide, do they want to meet you or they don't want to meet you, right? Uh, so I, so, sorry, I'll come, uh, come to that bit a little later uh, about the, we'll discuss first impression in a little more details after this. How is TWMC qualified to do this? Uh, I think I'll just take you through my profile a little, uh, you know, you can have a look at it, it's on the screen. As I said, I graduated in 2008. I took help of my seniors and my classmates at that point of time, I made a horrible resume. Uh, you know, so it, it is basically everything that you shouldn't do on your resume. Uh, but anyway, so when I uh, worked with Vahura, I realized the kind of, uh, I was trained by, you know, uh, people who had worked in law firms and uh, a lot of top HR professionals. So with the help of them, I realized that, you know, what is the ideal resume? What should an ideal resume look like for your uh, law firms and corporate houses? So, yeah, I spent good uh, years there. Then at CAM, I was on the other side of the table. And uh, so I have gone through, in 10 years, I've gone through thousands of resumes across various levels. So I think by now I can fairly confidently tell you what works and what really doesn't work. Okay, so I think uh, we are good to just start right away with the resume writing. So as I said, that resume is your first impression. And a lot of time to my students, I give example of Tinder, if that's the right example. Uh, you know, on Tinder, what you do is that you decide if you want to swipe left or right, whichever is the positive or negative. I'm not very sure about that. But it's purely on the basis of your photo, right? So that's what your resume does for you for an interview. So that is your first impression. This is how people will decide if they want to call you for your uh, interview, uh, for an interview or not. Now, this, what does resume do? It basically shows them your drafting skills, your achievements, your academic achievements. If you have attention to detail, do you have command of the language, uh, how serious you are towards your career because if you haven't paid that, that much attention to two pages, which are probably the most important bit of your life, uh, then they are going to judge you that, okay, how serious are they about their career because they haven't even bothered to create a flawless resume. So you have to make sure that your resume is absolutely flawless, okay? Now, it should be really easy on the eye. Nobody really spends more than 30 to 40 seconds looking at the resume. So it should be that easy on the eye that if they look at your resume from a distance, they should be able to read everything really, really clearly. Now, design, when I say design, it doesn't mean that you have to include, uh, you know, funny bullet points, uh, it's a lawyer's resume. We are very used to seeing everything in black and white. Um, a fairly simple structure. We are not from the advertising industry, so please try to avoid any colors, borders, um, as I said, funny bullet points, funny fonts. Keep it extremely, extremely simple. I will uh, also give you, uh, I will also let you know about a product that will help you in creating a very, very, clear, crisp resume. So as I was saying that in 30 seconds, people should be able to read what exactly have you uh, mentioned on your resume. So please keep it extremely clean and clear. There should be no funny font on your resume. Uh, if you use Comic Sans, they're going to use Shredder for your resume. So don't do that. Formatting, uh, there cannot be any formatting error, no unnecessary spacing, no unnecessary typos, no spelling mistakes. Uh, what really happens is uh, when you, know, you prepare your resume and if you forward it in the word format to your prospective uh, you know, employers, 
at times it just you know uh, it it changes from system to system so please make sure that you're only sending pdf format of your resume so that there are no formatting errors when it gets converted from word to pdf so please take a print out before you send it across because when uh, say a law firm partner is going to interview you they will be given a print out of your resume so you know if if the structure has moved it will not really look very pleasant and it also doesn't look very good when you start making excuses there that uh, you know actually uh, it got converted in different format this is how it was supposed to look so please make sure that you make it in a pdf you send share your resume in pdf and take a print out and see how it is looking before you share it make sure that uh, there are no tables on your resume because tables occupy unnecessary space whatever you want to mention you can easily mention in bullet points we will be covering various headings that should be there on your resume so we will discuss that in uh, details no unnecessary uh, sentences and caps you you it shouldn't look like your uh, resume is screaming at someone so please make sure that you're using right font uh, no unnecessary capital letters no unnecessary spacing uh, for lawyers it's very important that there are no typos right because immediately they start judging you that okay too many typos too many errors so please make sure that you take care of that one thing that is very important is the length uh, i see that students feel that you know oh my god i've done so much but i can't fit it into two pages and this is what i share with everyone that you know how can ever my brilliance be captured in a one page resume this is exactly what the recruiters are thinking okay nobody wants to see a resume which is more than two pages if a partner if a sa can manage to capture all their work in two pages as a student you easily easily can do that so there's no excuse for that so please make sure that you're Uh, length of your resume is not beyond two pages. Uh, see, also the thing is that uh, it's you know it's also connected to first impression. Uh, when someone looks at your resume, it should only they should only see stars. If you fill it with fluff, it it is going to you know. So say if you were president of your college, and then you are listing down some six committees that you are a member of. not really an elected member so that sort of diminishes instead if you talk, you know if you're giving positions of responsibility and you give you know best of just three of them that looks more impressive than a very important position with lot of fluff so make sure that just keep thinking about first impression it it has to pack maximum punch in those two pages so we'll straight away come to uh, how your resume should look what all should be the various headings for this so we'll start with photo um a lot of uh, we'll also discuss actually logo of your college in this a lot of people keep asking me that you know should should i include photo or not generally uh, uh it's not required but i've seen that some firms of late have been asking photos and maybe in uh, times like this covid times it'll be good to include photo as well so you can include that however please be very conscious about the fact that it is a very professional photo you could have looked stellar in a selfie that you've taken or a party that you attended please don't crop photos and put them there uh it is very evident even if you use selfie stick people can figure out that uh it is a selfie so please use a professionally taken photo like your passport photos so that's that's how your photo should be on your linkedin on your resume as well also please make sure that it's an updated photo i when i go to a lot of law schools i meet students and i look at their photo and the person who appears in front of me is completely different because they've put a photo which was taken in first year of their college so please make sure that it's a latest photo not older than 6 months okay so a professional looking photo and not a very old one at that coming to heading so heading basically includes your name your address your contact details and that's about it so your name should be in slightly larger font and your uh, 
address and contact details in slightly smaller font. It, it looks professional that way. Um, when it comes to your address, what you have to do is you have to put your permanent address. A lot of times students keep putting uh, address of their college. See, when you're writing that you're from so-and-so college, so if I'm writing I'm from Nalsar Hyderabad in my academic achievement uh, or academic qualifications, it is evident that it is in Hyderabad and nobody needs to know address of Nalsar there. So please put your permanent address. Uh, also, things like address, uh, your school, your college can work as icebreakers as well. What are icebreakers? So an interview is a very uh, tense process, right? Especially students, they're extremely nervous. Trust me, if I go for an interview today, I'll be equally nervous. So it's a very natural thing. So what we do is we include certain things in the resume, uh, not on purpose, but these things work as icebreakers. So I'm from Sony Bath which is in Haryana. And if I see someone whose address is Sonipat or is schooling from Sonipat, immediately, instead of directly making it very intense that, okay, tell us about yourself and, you know, uh, tell us about your internships, I'll probably ask them that, oh, hey, you're from Sonipat. So which part of Sonipat do you live in? So immediately it eases the atmosphere in the interview room. So these little things can make a big difference. So your uh, hobbies can make uh, so hobbies act as icebreaker, your uh, address acts as icebreaker, your uh, school also acts as an icebreaker. I'll come to that in academic qualifications. So you put your address, your permanent address, please make sure you mention your correct email ID and write phone number. A lot of times students add uh, like an 11 digit phone number or a nine digit phone number. Please remember that they might try to contact you and you don't want to miss out on our on an opportunity just because you put out wrong phone number. So please make sure that you're adding the uh, right phone number. As for email address, this kind of email address shouldn't be going on your resume. No party QT, no contact me at so-and-so. Please have a professional email address. You might have made your email address when you were in 12th standard and you thought, um, you know, uh, whatever, like you do at, you do fan, uh, whatever, other at gmail.com. So very lame example, but something on those lines, please make sure it should be like akamsa.anthil at gmail.com, uh, right? So your name, your surname, something on those lines. So a professional email address, that's what your heading will include. Um, coming to academic qualifications, your academic qualifications, everything in your resume will be in reverse chronological order. So we will start with your college. So you will have your college name, uh, the year uh, that you are in, your CGPA. Uh, so basically name, city, grade, all those things will be in academic qualification. Then you will move to 12th standard and then 10th 10, 10 standard. So you are going to mention uh, your school name and your uh, the board that you've been part of it's easier because at times ICI, ICSE, uh, you know, marks you differently, CBSE marks you differently, uh, state board marks you differently, right? So it'll be easier for them to understand uh, where you really stood if you put your state board also there. And uh, it'll be great if you can add your stream as well because uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, you meet people who, Move, who had science in 10th and 12th, uh, sorry, 11th and 12th standard, and then they moved to uh, law. So you will have an interesting story and they probably will also have an interesting story to share with you. But this is the reason that we decided to do law. So please put it there, it'll work as an icebreaker. Also, as I was talking about school, so I'll just give you an example. People from Calcutta are obsessed with schools. Uh, mm -hmm. People in Sony Patan. So, but, I've seen that, you know, you could have gone to, you know, top national law schools and uh, done your master's from Harvard, Oxford, wherever, but uh, they're really touchy about their schools uh, if they're from Calcutta. So I know more about schools in Calcutta than I know about schools in Sonipat. So, and I've seen that, uh, you know, because I sat for these interviews with various partners who were from Calcutta and immediately they will see a student who probably is from a rival school in Calcutta or from same school. 
again, this will immediately work as an icebreaker that, oh, you're from the school. So the conversation will slightly go in that direction. So give them that opportunity where, you know, that atmosphere in the interview room can be eased a little. So this is uh, when it got, this is basically what includes uh, your academic qualification. Also very important point, a lot of students ask me, uh, so, uh, what about CS or CA or uh, you know, any other degree that you've acquired? So unless it's a CACS, uh, please include that in academic qualifications. However, if it's, uh, you know, if you've done some online courses or some diploma courses, please don't include those in your academic qualifications. This should be extremely crisp and very sharp and to the point. So don't divert their attention with four other diploma courses that you've done. Please uh, be very prudent and see, does this make sense? So, you know, a lot of it will go, uh, you will have to go by your judgment also, but I recommend my students to stick to your uh, college, 12th, 10th, and probably just CACS and nothing else. Then internships. Now internships, again, will be in re uh, reverse chronological order and Format will be for city uh, dates of internships. Now, uh, city is important because say if you're interning, uh, you've interned at CAM. Now CAM has offices in multiple cities. So it'll be easier for your interviewer to know that this is the city that you interned in. So please make sure you are mentioning the city. Also date of internship or the duration of internship because a lot of times, um, you know, at times you would have got an internship, you would have done internships either for six weeks, because normally you get internship for four weeks. So they can understand, your interviewer can understand that it is a six week internship because probably you did very good work and you got an extension of another couple of weeks. It can also work in an opposite manner where you've only done two week internship and it is a well-known fact that a two week internship is generally what you get via contacts. So. If if you've gotten internship via contacts, please don't be embarrassed about it. It's absolutely fine, but don't try to hide it because if they ask you later that, okay, how many weeks did you intern there? And then you mentioned two weeks. It's better to just, you know, uh, be very straightforward and honest and let them know that, okay, it was a two week internship because I got it via contacts. So don't be embarrassed. You will just come across as a more uh, honest person. Then, uh, what about your work? You should capture your work um, in clean, crisp bullet points in a very clear language. I'll just give you an example. So this is how your work should sound. Please don't just add, uh, don't keep mentioning acts one after another, okay? Make sure that you're talking about your work. Okay, I assisted in conducting due diligence. Uh, don't write, I did due diligence of a share purchase agreement. You don't do due diligence of a share purchase agreement. You review a share purchase agreement. So don't make mistakes like those. Uh, don't just write in your litigation internships one after another that, uh, you know, I interned, I went to the court and attended proceedings. It is understood. Please try not to state very obvious things. Do talk about your uh, internships in a very professional manner. Explain your work well and don't use generic sentences and especially don't go around listing all the bare acts, uh, all the acts that you worked on. The idea is that more you write, more questions you will be asked. So it is important that you're mentioning your work in a very clean, crisp manner and only things that you're extremely confident about. If you're going to go around mentioning things that you probably don't even remember, they are going to catch you and they're going to ask you questions one after another. Every single letter word on your resume, please remember you can be asked questions on. They can ask you questions on your mood quotes, um, the problem that was given to you, the topic of your publication, what was your finding on that, what was your conclusion, your debates. So anything and everything that is there on your resume, you can't say that, uh, you know, oh, I did this in my first year or second year, that's why I don't remember. Um, just giving you an example, if a client comes to a lawyer and uh, gives them certain kind of work and the lawyer tells them, oh, I, you know, actually I did this like four years back. I don't remember much of it. They will immediately lose interest in them. So th that is no excuse that, okay, 
I don't really remember uh, what I did some some time back. So you have to know every single word on your resume, even if you did that in first year. Please go back and re-research on the work that you had done and be prepared with that. So that's for your internships. Uh, mention only the most important ones. All of us have been law students. All of us have done internships. People who will be interviewing you also have done those internships. They know that any law student would have done almost say 10 internships, five years, say two internship every year, 10 internships. Does that mean that you have to go around uh, talking about all the internships? No, as I said in the beginning, please make sure that your resume packs a punch. Now, if you're going to add fluff to it, it is, it is going to look like an average resume overall then. So please make sure you mention only the most important internships and tweak it uh, you know, for the firm that you're sending it to. So just keep changing, uh, don't have one version of your resume. It's always helpful to have like multiple versions. So tweak it accordingly, know your audience and uh, mention those internships, which will be more useful for the place that you're sending your resume to. So if it's a law firm, that doesn't mean that you're adding only law firm internships, right? Because we know as a law student, you're expected to do all kinds of internships starting from NGO, litigation, trial court, high court, supreme court, uh, corporate houses, um, law firms. So give them a healthy mix of uh, internships so that they know that you've tried your hand at everything. However, you can add a few more internships uh, from the place, uh, uh, sorry, from the perspective what you're interested in. So if you're more interested in law firms, you can add uh, say three law firm internships and rest of the others or four law firm internships but try not to mention more than, you know, say five to seven internships. So they can be three law firm internships, uh, two litigation internships, one NGO internship. That'll be a very healthy mix of uh, your internships on your resume. Now coming to co-curricular activities. I'll just uh, see if there are any questions that you guys have. Okay, what about online internships? That's a very important question. Um, yeah, so basically what you have to do for your online internships, and I understand a lot of you have been doing a lot of online internships uh, in last uh, five months, and maybe you'll be doing more in next uh, two, three months as well. Uh, do talk about your internships, but again, please make sure that you're only mentioning the most important ones. As I said, know your audience. If you're sending it to a law firm and you've done some uh, law firm internships in this duration, you can add those. Uh, if you've done some research assistantship, please add those as well. Are there, uh, so I, I think that should answer your questions. Please consider online internships like regular internships in these times, but do mention in your internship that this was an online internship, okay? So these are, uh, you know, uh, a extraordinary circumstances. So people will understand that, okay, these were, you know, you were sitting at home and you utilize your time well and you did some online internships. Now, are there any specific points to be kept in mind for resumes to be sent for to, to be sent to practicing lawyers in the High Court and Supreme Court? Again, you know, you can tweak it accordingly. You can add more of litigation internships and reduce few other, say, uh, law firm internships. But I would again suggest and stress on the point that make sure that it's a healthy mix of internships. So more or less, it'll be same, but you will just have to add or remove one or two internships here and there, depending on, on the uh, resume, depending on the place you're sending your resume to. So say you're sending a resume to an IB firm. So of course, you know, try it. If, if you're someone who has worked on say 10 publications, you should include slightly, you know, uh, give a little more weightage to IP publications and do include other publications as well. But you have to keep tweaking your resume accordingly, depending on your uh, audience. Coming to co-curricular uh, activities. Now, co-curricular activities will include anything from your moot codes, uh, publications, debates, courses, and conferences. Now, you went to a conference and uh, you slept through it and you have no idea about it. Please don't add that. As I said, 
only write things that you can confidently talk about. Now, a lot of you would be doing plenty of courses uh, in the time that you have. Does that mean that you have to include all those courses? Now, see if you're, uh, you know, you attend a workshop with me. You don't have to include that in your resume. That doesn't make sense. I mean, there are few things that you do for your personal enrichment uh, to sound like a better professional for your uh, personal knowledge. You don't have to go around giving all the courses that you've done online. Please make sure you give only the courses uh, that are extremely reputable. Um, probably you have acquired some certificate, you've done it from top law school or a top institute, or uh, you know earlier HSF used to conduct some courses. I'm not sure if they still do in law school. So if there are those kind of courses, please go ahead and put that, but don't go around listing all the courses you've done. Again, remember that page limit on your resume should be only two pages. And use your uh, mood codes publications debates accordingly. So I have met a lot of students who are super achievers, who have done plenty of mood codes, plenty of publications, and they just go about populating their resume with the same. Now, when your interviewer sees that resume, it's just hectic on their brain and their eyes. So, you know, if you're a super achiever, please mention your top three mood codes, top, uh, you know, your best of four publications, couple of debates, one course, one conference, and that's more than enough. If you're someone um, who has only done mood codes and nothing else, then have uh, four, four, five mood code competitions. Don't go around adding everything with your participation only. Make sure that, uh, you know, so you use, you list your achievements accordingly. So if there are, uh, you know, mood codes where you won the competition, of course, you're going to stress more on that. And there are a couple of mood codes where you've participated. That's how you should list it. So a couple of participations, one achievement. If you haven't won anything, that's absolutely fine. List uh, three mood codes where you participated. Um, so again, pack a punch. Remember this, your resume has to pack a punch. Don't add fluff to it. If you're someone who hasn't, so a lot of students ask me that I don't have mood codes, um, but I only have publications. It's not, see, everyone sitting in these law firms, nobody is, uh, they're not all the same, okay? They all have been students who, who are probably brilliant mooters or brilliant researchers, or, uh, you know, they had a lot of extracurricular activities. So it's absolutely fine if you don't have one thing and you have other thing on your resume. So it's absolutely fine if you don't have mood code, but a lot of publications. However, um, Fifth year might be a little too late to populate your resume, but you still have time. But try to include things, at least show them that you've tried your hand at one thing or the other, found your strength and work more towards that. That's about co-curricular activities, uh, about extracurricular. Now in extracurricular activities, it can uh, include your, uh, you know, if you're, uh, if you participated in dramas, if you do stand-up comedy, if you participated in singing competition, dancing, or uh, positions of responsibility, all those things, um, they are extremely important extracurricular activities because they show your personality, right? All these things everyone does, internship, everyone does, academic qualifications, everyone has. So, you know, everyone has been through that process. Extracurriculars show that, you know, what else do you do? What else is there to you uh, that you have participated in law school, how you have utilized your time there? So please mention those things here. Again, don't go around listing things from back from your school, okay? So have a limit that you will not uh, talk about anything. So in school, maximum that you can go to is your 12th or 11th standard. So if you were a head girl or a head boy in uh, your school, you can mention that. However, please don't go around listing achievements from school because it sort of shows that, you know, uh, you were a star in school and after that you haven't bothered to do much in law school as such. So include, uh, do include extracurricular activities. Uh, they will be a good uh, point of conversation as well. Um, I'll just give you a simple example. I don't know if you have heard of Chagla Cup uh, or ELP Cup. So there are a lot of uh, football, cricket, um, you know, championships that happen specifically for lawyers. So, you know, if you're a brilliant footballer, 
they might immediately the firm who's an active participant will immediately have that connection with you and they'll ask you that also oh, you play football okay so you know uh, so again an icebreaker so they will probably talk to you a little bit a little bit more about that um i've seen these things happening with uh, a number of partners uh, whom i've interviewed with from camp so these are the examples that i'm giving you from real life situations so yeah so extracurricular activities are important however please make sure that uh, you're not listing your uh, like some very very silly activities i mean this is an exceptional case but this is also my favorite example uh, while i was um, at camp i came across this uh, student who we were interviewing and he had listed in his extracurricular activity uh, basically achievement that he won fancy dress competition in second standard uh, it was quite funny because uh, our immediate reaction was that's not your achievement that's your mother's achievement because in second standard you would probably just dress up and sent and told to out of few lines so please uh, don't divert their attention to silly things you are only going to get 15 to 20 minutes uh, in the interview based on your resume make sure that they're utilizing that time well and asking you only the most relevant things if you're going to waste your time waste their time uh, by making them and your time by making them ask you silly questions and pointing out mistakes on your resume you have lost that opportunity hobbies can i feel that they are extremely extremely important because uh i'm interested in photography i like reading so if i meet someone on the other side who's spoken about that you know in their free time they like to do photography this will again work as a conversation starter icebreaker whatever you call it uh so please make sure that uh, you mention your hobbies but while mentioning your hobbies don't say things like painting dancing uh, ske- uh not sketching uh swimming okay we are not in second standard we are not going to talk about our hobbies like that you have to sound like a professional throughout your resume even when you're talking about your hobbies so please mention your hobbies say in two sentences and say that in my free time i uh, you know i like to play cricket i like to uh, watch thriller shows on netflix or i like to you know i like to paint and see when uh, when you're saying paint you can you, you can mention that i use watercolors as medium because painting is a very generic thing right so if if you can mention that you use watercolors poster colors so it makes it a little more specific so you again will sound like a professional if you are using you know very crisp uh, crisp clear uh, language so make sure that you're talking about your hobbies like that so no generic sentences like singing dancing traveling this that they will ask you questions based uh, on your hobbies as well so don't write things which you think sound fancy and you have zero idea about um, again i'll give you an example there was someone who wrote in their resume that in my free time i like to read up um on on fighter planes or you know so basically unfortunately for that student the partner who was sitting next to me had done a lot of work in defense practice and he immediately started asking the student the question uh, questions based on uh, fighter planes as such and the student was clueless so it reflects really poorly on you it also shows that you're being dishonest and immediately they lose interest in you so please make sure that you're extremely honest um, while you're writing uh, anything on your resume also what happens a lot of students ask me that in my free time i honestly you know uh, i like to watch a lot of tv i like to watch a lot of shows it's absolutely fine you know you don't have to create uh, hobbies just to show that you you know to paint a different picture of yourself it's very relatable if you write that i like to watch you know comedy shows it'll be brilliant a person like me will be very interested i'll i'll ask you that also what shows do you recommend what have you been watching of late if you like masala movies write that it's absolutely fine people are not going to judge you on basis of your hobbies it's absolutely fine so you can write uh, that in my free time i like to watch these kind of shows but use uh, 
again, your language should be professional. Please say that I like to uh, watch thrillers, comedies. Use a very good language to explain anything on your resume. There's a question there. Should we add participation certificates for webinars? Again, there are like uh, thousands of webinars that are happening day in, day out. Uh, you know, even if you've done a webinar on, uh, and honestly, these webinars are being offered by uh, partners of various law firms, associates of various law firms, um, all the kind of people. I would suggest that unless it is uh, a course or uh, that you've done from a very prestigious place, you don't really need to add on your resume. However, if you don't have anything else to add on your resume, then to populate your resume, your co-curricular section, there you can probably add a couple of webinars. So I hope that addresses your uh, question of, you know, if you should add participa participation certificates from webinars. I would suggest not really, uh, because your moods, public, if you have mood codes, publications, debates, um, you know, some really important courses from uh, prestigious institutes, then you should mention those. And if you don't have anything uh, that you can populate your resume with, then you please add a couple of webinars that you've participated in. How should one update their resume when they have been working for a year now? Um, okay, so we'll come to that after the last bit of uh, the resume. Uh, that is knowledge of an extra language. Now, uh, this can be, this can come very handy. Uh, so I've seen a lot of firms in their real estate practice asking for candidates who have knowledge of local language because a lot of documents are in local language. So if you're in Bombay, then Marathi, uh, Gujarati, if you're in Karnataka, so then Kannada. So it's helpful if you can put that, if you know any language other than English and Hindi, please mention that on your resume, that can come handy. However, uh, you know, like Haryangi is not a language, so I can't add that on my uh, resume. So other than local languages, if you know uh, an international language, which is your Spanish, French, German, and you've done a course on that, please add that. However, if you've learned it from Duolingo and Babel and Guzu and all those uh, apps, please don't add that. That doesn't uh, really qualify as knowledge of an extra language unless you've done a course from a reputed institute, then please mention that. Otherwise, don't mention knowledge of an extra language. Uh, coming to the question about how you should update your resume when you've been working for a year. When you have worked for a year, your focus should be more on the current workplace. Please talk a lot more about the work and less about your internships. And a lot of my candidates who have one year of experience commit that mistake where they keep adding, uh, you know, where their work experience occupies as much space as their uh, internship from law school. So it sort of diverts your attention. It'll, you know, it'll probably confuse your interviewer if this is your work experience or your internship. Please make sure that your work includes uh, occupies more space and your internships occupy less space. So the distinction is very clear that this is your work experience and this is your internship experience. Also, you know, then of course, because your work experience will occupy more space. So other things will get reduced a little, your co-curricular and extracurricular activities, because you're not a law student anymore. You're a working profession and accordingly you will have to populate your resume. Now, this is something that I came across recently, this web website called resugo.com. And uh, I thought it was fantastic. And that's why I decided that I should share this with um, everyone on uh, this webinar today. Um, this has been created by a bunch of lawyers. So they do understand. And with the help of recruiters like me, I mean, they've taken our advice into consideration. I haven't really actively, actively contributed to it as such. But um, I've had a couple of discussions with them very recently and gave my input. And it's, it you know, solves your problem because uh, this is also not a paid promotion. I just really like this product. And I think that 
uh, it'll make uh, life of recruiters also very easy where we can just tell our candidates to make their resume on this website and it's free of cost. So, uh, you know, they have taken a lot of uh, US style format, which is mostly one page or two pages. And it's a very clean and clear format uh, because it's been built by lawyers. So they know what are the kind of resumes law firms look for. Um, so the format is very clean and clear. What all you have to do is add your information, add keywords, and it will create your resume in the format that is perfect for Indian law firms and corporate houses. Uh, I went through that exercise myself and I thought it was really easy. You will not have to worry about formatting bit at all. No borders, no colors, no uh, unnecessary um, uh, you know, page numbers, there's that like a lot of unnecessary things that you end up adding on your resume or committing mistake, at least that will be taken care of. So try this out. I think it is fantastic. So um, all you will have to take care of after going to this website is the content that you will be putting in your resume. That is something that you're in control of. How it looks is what this website will take care of. Um, uh, I do conduct these workshops and, uh, you know, there, there is a lot more that goes in your resume and um, the section like what you shouldn't be including in your resume, extremely, extremely important. However, I do conduct workshops uh, which cover all these things where I train people in resume writing, cover letter, as I said earlier, group discussion, interview, internship. So if you want more details on top of this, then you can go and register on my website. These are uh, the things that I really cover in my workshops, depending on which uh, year of law school you're in, because uh, different batch has different requirements. Different law schools have different requirements. So this is what I uh, do in my workshop. So this is, uh, you know, if you email me, then we can uh, send you all this information uh, on your email address. This is the flow of the program. This is how it looks. You have to register on the website. You will receive uh, the detailed structure of uh, the program and the fee structure. You can choose your program and uh, you will go through the workshop. You will have a mock interview and you will have a counseling session, feedback session, all those things. So yeah, uh, there are a couple of questions that I'll address before I end this. Um, the question is, do interviews focus more on PQE rather than internships? Absolutely, once you start working, Interviewers definitely focus way more on your uh, post-qualification experience than your internships. Internships um, are, you know, good for them to know where all you've interned. However, moment you graduate and moment you start working, the sole focus is on the kind of work that you've done in last one year or two years or whatever work you've done. How important is CGPA if one has experience? It depends on how you come across, uh, you know, how your resume overall looks. If, uh, just a sec. Okay, uh, how important, uh, yeah. So CGPA, uh, if you're in law school, uh, CGPA honestly is extremely, extremely important. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I was in law school, I used to also think that, oh, you know, CGPA is not reflection of my intelligence. Honestly, it is, uh, maybe not purely of your intelligence, but it is definitely a reflection of your hard work. So it's, you know, law firms can uh, basically prospective employers can easily distinguish or it's an easier way for uh, them to shortlist you from a bunch of other professionals. So it shows that, okay, uh, you're someone who can, who are a multitasker, Despite doing, uh, you know, participating in a lot of moot courts, uh, writing a lot of papers, you still have good academic score, which means that you can handle a lot of things. You're, it also shows that you're a hardworking person. So, uh, yeah, it is a good reflector. However, once you start working, your internships, your uh, co-curricular, extracurricular, they start becoming less important, right? So, it it'll not be that important, but it'll also depend on, um, you know, how many years of experience you have. If you have one year of experience, people will uh, still look at it. But once you have two years of experience, they will look at the kind of work you have done. That becomes more important than your CGPA. 
okay um yeah uh, i think that's about it and uh, uh also for uh, you know uh, a lot of courses uh, you can sorry sorry my bad i think that's about it uh, any other extra information you can definitely uh, go to my website and participate in the workshops and i'll be happy to share a lot more information and a lot more gyan from my end yeah okay great meeting with everyone